Hey, how's it going everybody? In my last video, I talked about five reasons uh, we suffer. And just to recap, those are because of the sins of other people or mistakes of other people. Sometimes it's our own mistakes that cause us problems. Uh, sometimes it's because uh, we try to do something good or right, and there's just difficulty in achieving that. A fourth reason is because it's just the reality of the world in which we live. Man, we just live in a fallen world that's just full of, of just struggles. Uh, and then the fifth one, uh, which is a tough one, uh, is because sometimes we experience suffering so that God can be glorified. Uh, John chapter 9, which is a, a tricky concept to grasp, but, but it's the truth. So the question is, uh, do we really suffer? What are some of the ways in which we as just regular people face difficulties? We looked at Moses. Uh, none of us are leading uh, nations out of captivity or anything like that, but we still have real-world uh, difficulties. Some of those I thought of were like times of indecision, and you struggle uh, through those. Maybe there are financial burdens we face, family, contract, uh, family conflict, you know, relationship uh, struggles. Sometimes if you go to church, man, church conflict causes you to struggle or have uh, difficulty. Uh, even the loss of a loved one uh, could be one, maybe our own sickness or poor health. Uh, and then a final way we experience difficulty or suffering is trying to follow Jesus and do the right thing. <laughs> Submit to His will and serve others. That's just tough, man. It's difficulty. So when we're in the middle of all that, uh, what is the response? What's a biblical response uh, to suffering? And for that, I would look uh, for the Apostle Paul's uh, example. Man, in, in uh, what, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, Paul just lists all these difficulties that he had faced throughout his uh, life and ministry trying to do right. Uh, everything from shipwrecks to being stoned and beaten many times, sickness, exposure to cold, uh, imprisonment. Uh, and then uh, we see in the book of Philippians uh, him giving a testimony almost of his current condition uh, in that time, which was uh, his imprisonment in Rome. And so if we look at that first chapter of Philippians, uh, we can see Paul as an example, uh, see his response to his own suffering. And I think by that, man, we have a good biblical template uh, to follow. And that would be, uh, man, our response to suffering is we must understand that it's something we have to endure through. We have to endure suffering for those previous reasons we mentioned. Uh, there are just reasons in life that we face suffering, and it's just something we have to accept and be willing to endure. Secondly, uh, as a believer in Jesus and a follower of Jesus, man, we need to understand that uh, our suffering is an opportunity uh, to reflect Jesus to others. Uh, to, it's a way we can display our faith, our response to suffering. is a way we can display our faith and reflect Jesus. Uh, thirdly, uh, man, our response to suffering should be to understand that we have help. Uh, uh, we have help from other believers and also help from the Holy Spirit uh, who lives in us. We can rely on the help of God Himself to get through suffering. And a final way is we should see suffering as a way uh, to look out for uh, the benefit of others. Uh, take it as an opportunity to serve others. Oftentimes, when we suffer, other people are in it with us. Uh, now, we could take a very self-centered and selfish approach, or, uh, man, we could uh, live a life worthy of the gospel, that is, laying our life down for the benefit of others and look for those opportunities to serve them. And that's what we see in Philippians chapter 1. Paul said because he's in prison, uh, the gospel's being spread, and other people are seeing his testimony, and they too have the boldness to preach Jesus. So he saw it as an opportunity to reflect Jesus. He said there in verse 12 that what has happened to him has served to advance the gospel. And Paul understood, man, this is worth enduring through because there's some purpose behind it. And his main focus was to reflect Jesus. Later in the chapter, he says that he knows he can glorify God in his body, endure this suffering because of the prayers of those uh, Philippians uh, that he was writing to and because of the help of the Spirit of Jesus. So Paul relied on help in the midst of his suffering, and we too should rely on that same help. Uh, and then finally, Paul said that, man, uh, for him to keep on living is, is actually for the benefit of the Philippians, but if he were to die and escape this suffering, it would actually be better for him. 
Uh, and he really was transparent in saying, man, I don't know which of these I actually would choose uh, given the chance uh, to escape this suffering and go be with Jesus or to continue in it for your benefit. But he concluded, uh, I will remain so that I can be an encouragement uh, to you uh, Philippians, the ones he was writing to. So even in his suffering, uh, man, Paul endured. He, he, he reflected Jesus. He, he sought help and embraced help from others. And he took it as an opportunity to encourage those that were facing the same kinds of struggles that he was. Uh, that's what Paul said there at the end of that chapter. And he actually gave a charge to the Philippians uh, asking them or demanding from them that they live lives worthy of the gospel of Jesus. And that a sign of their salvation was that they too could suffer along just like Paul for the sake of Christ. Uh, and man, I think that same charge would be for us believers today, that our lives would be worthy of the gospel of Jesus. And this is what that looks like. Very simple. We embrace suffering and endure it. Rather than cower down and, and complain and take a negative viewpoint of it, look, we, we view it as an opportunity to reflect Jesus to others. Uh, we, we seek the help of others. We rely on God uh, and we look for ways to serve others. So, so what does that look like? Man, when family conflict happens, ugh, <laughs> when relationship strain happens, when church conflict happens, when our feelings get hurt, uh, to, to reflect a life worthy of the gospel would be to endure that, to try to do the right thing in the midst of these times of suffering, to actually lay down our life and try to seek the well-being of those around us, uh, and to rely on our brothers and sisters in Christ and the Holy Spirit to help us show forth uh, gospel um, to, to reflect Jesus to others in the midst of financial struggle. Uh, all those times, loss of health, being kingdom-minded, others-minded, uh, and willing to endure for the sake of Jesus, to do the right thing. When, when we're challenged, uh, we want to be selfish. We're trying to submit to Jesus. We're trying to serve others. It's hard, man. We've got to be willing to endure put kingdom-mindedness first, rely on our brothers and sisters, draw close to them, draw close to God, and lay, lay down our lives for the well-being of others in the midst of our own suffering. See, the call of Jesus is this, that you take up your cross and you follow Him. You identify with His suffering and be willing to live that sort of life, which is insane, man. Even when Jesus would teach that, people would turn and walk away and say, man, His teaching's way too hard. Uh, but this is the deal, though. Uh, that happened one time, I think, in Luke. And Jesus turns to his disciples and he says, Are you going to leave too? And Peter says, Where do we go? You're the Messiah. You have the truth. Um, and that, 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 I think, is the truth. Uh, that Jesus is the way. See, Jesus said things like this. If you're going to follow me, you have to lose your life. And those who willingly give up their life actually gain it. Uh, but those that hold on to their life, that, that are self-seeking, self-centered, pursue their own pleasure at the expense of others, try to avoid suffering at all cost, see no purpose in serving others and loving others, uh, those kind of people actually lose their life. Uh, so it's dying to self and following Jesus. See, in America, this is what we say, Hey, get saved and ask Jesus into your heart. Uh, that's not exactly what Jesus would say. He would say, die to self and submit to my lordship. Abandon what you want and do what I want you to do. He, he's the God of the universe. He's the Messiah. He's the one that died on the cross and paid our sin debt so we could have ultimate life. But to be a follower of Jesus is to actually do what Jesus said. Jesus uh, commanded that if, if you love me, you will do what I say. Now, many of you in Matthew 7 keep saying, <laughs> you're my followers. Oh, you say you love me, but you're, but you're really not. You're really not laying down your life and submitting to my lordship. Now, look, I, I don't have this figured out. 
man, there are areas in my life where I'm really, really struggling to, to, to lay down what, what I want, what I think is right, what would give me pleasure what would work out best for me. It's really super hard to willingly lay that down <clears throat> and follow Jesus and suffer and try to live a life uh, that displays the gospel in action. That means grace and long-suffering and service to others. I mean, it's just super, super hard to do that. I would rather everything work out well for me and me to have pleasure and me to have a life of ease. So I've got some, some issues i got to be working through, man. I think we all do. But see, this is the deal, though. To, to get there, we have to practice. I have to, I have to practice, which is countercultural in America, man. We only do what's best for us. That's just how we live in America. <sighs> So when we suffer, let's let's see that that there is purpose to it. Man, it, you got to you got to go by faith though to to actually grasp these concepts and put them into practice. Uh, it, it's super hard. Think think about like Abraham being called to just pack up and go. There there's cost involved. Jesus laying down his life, there's cost involved. The disciples forsaking all and following Jesus, there's cost involved. The Apostle Paul laying his life down in his...